now we can take the computer music studio into the natural world and bring all that stuff, all that power of com computation, right there out into the world and perform with it. So we don't just record the sounds anymore and play them back in our piece, which is what the environmental sound artists of like the 1970s could do. Now we take, we go and we play with the natural world. We make music with the snow in real time, you know? We make music with the sand, with the wind, in real time. If the wind is blowing, and that's a certain energy, and we turn that energy into an instrumental ensemble playing, we have transduced the energy of the wind into the ensemble. And this is a way that I like to make music, um, taking some observable form of energy in the natural world and bringing it directly into the musical composition. So not changing it in, you know, allowing it to be the expression of the natural world in music. Not a portrait that I paint of, the, of the, the landscape, but actually something of the landscape. The real, the real timing of it. For example, the gusts of wind and their, their patterns. Put that in the instrumental music so that it's not me trying to map it into meter or into some special form of rhythm that I've conceived, but really let it be, let the natural world sing in that way. Oxalock is the third piece in a multimedia opera triptych about Alaska that I've composed over the last 15 years. And uh, Oxalock is the, the, a collaboration with Scott Deal, a media artist based in, um, formerly Alaskan, based in Indianapolis. And we premiered it at the end of last year. It's a telematic opera. So what that means is that we're, we have multiple stages that are interconnected with high-speed internet such that we can um, stream audio and video between the sites and the audiences in one location experience a live performance in their venue, but they also can see and hear the other, uh, other sites being streamed in real time over the internet. Um, we use this technology as a way to address issues of interconnectivity and uh, global uh, habitation of the planet. So we're looking at how people, our actions as an individual, affect the other side of the, f the world, places that are remote from us, and how those remote places changes there affect our lives in um, in the local com in the local community. So um, Oxlock uses this telematic technology to get at this point of climate change. It's a work about climate change, and it's. Um, and it takes place in the Arctic region where I grew up as a child. So I was born in Alaska and lived in three distinct regions of the state in my, in my childhood. Um, and each of the three 
operas deals with one of those regions, Oxalox the Third, and it deals with the far north, uh, the Arctic Ocean, and the catastrophic changes that have taken place in, over the last 40 years there as the result of, of climate change and global warming. most uh, interesting projects of the last few years has been the growth of, for, for in my work, has been the growth of the Ecosono group, which is a trying to, an organization that's trying to um, create a musical practice around uh, environment, human, and computer engagement. And so we've organized a number of outdoor performances. And I have to say that of all the performances that I've done over the last few years, the ones that stand out and I feel like I learned the most from were the, the, some of these outdoor concerts, um, which sometimes are quite humble in their, you know, they're not in prestigious venues, they're not um, well attended, um, they're not great performances, but there's something about the experience of interactive ecoacoustics in nature that has an accelerated, uh, accelerates our understanding of the, of the world. Mm -hmm. 